Welcome to the first of a series of short videos about the teaching of energy. NZIP has been inspired to produce this series uh, by the introduction of a new achievement standard at level one of NCEA. The teaching of energy and the concepts around energy are wide ranging and important. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Gary Williams. Gary is a well-known physics educator from Wales. He has worked extensively on professional learning in physics and currently works for the IOP Wales group. He's also published articles about the teaching of energy. Gary and I have met many times over the last few months and have planned a series of short videos to unpack what we consider to be the most important aspects in relation to supporting teachers in terms of teaching energy concepts. Today, we will be unpacking the survey we have recently carried out. We will also be discussing the work of Robin Miller. Robin Miller's 2005 paper, Teaching About Energy, provides some excellent advice about how to proceed in terms of unpacking energy concepts. In later videos, we will discuss language issues associated with energy, the teaching method for calculations, and practical activities that build conceptual understanding. We believe that the Robin Miller paper is essential reading for all teachers. Miller points out the issues in a clear and simple manner and is realistic about the limitations of the models and language we currently use. You will find a link to uh, Robin Miller's paper in, in the description at the bottom of the video, and also you'll see it in uh, here on screen. So let's have a look at the first slide here. So welcome, Gary. Um, oh. The survey we conducted recently, um, you've had a look at it. Um, what did you find out? Um, I think uh, when it comes to to teaching of energy, um, it, it tends to be done uh, quite vaguely, and a lot of the a lot to think of the of experienced colleagues um, who've been successful at teaching of energy would point to it needing to be quite systematic. I'm not I'm not convinced that there's necessarily one. Uh, better way of it being systematic but just the fact that it's you've got a systematic approach okay so when we look at the the survey that um, we did recently we 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 the, the survey um was responded to by teachers from uh, wales and new zealand but there were 149 science teachers from new zealand uh, responded 57 percent of those uh, teach physics for the majority of their teaching time and um, when we asked um, people <laughs> about how confident they felt teaching energy concepts and, and, and we're keeping things quite v vague here talking about energy concepts not, not being specific um, then nearly 50% um, thought that it, they, they agreed that they were confident in their teaching of physics and 25% uh, ish um, strongly agreed so we've only got about 25 percent who, who feel feel unconfident about um, the teaching of energy concepts which, which i think is is quite surprising and um isn't really borne out by um the, the research and wasn't really borne out by the results of our survey gary was that surprising that um, you know, do, do we see these sort of trends across teachers generally that they are confident about the teaching of, of, of energy concepts? I, I, I don't think it's surprising. Um, I mean, we'd hope that people were confident about what they were teaching. But when we, we do dig a little deeper into the into our survey, I think perhaps uh, some of that confidence m might be misplaced. OK, so, so how, how, how do we find out about that? You know, I, we did ask them some questions about um, some ranking exercises, didn't we? Yeah. So we um, we asked a, a series of ranking ranking exercises. So these these are questions. I mean, these questions are really designed to um, promote some discussion and some thinking. Um, so there isn't a you know, there isn't a, a definite right answer, a right uh, ranking um, for the statements that were given. But we think that we could argue that some of those um, would would you know definitely be towards the top of a of a ranking um, list, and and others would be at the bottom. So what's on the screen at the moment is uh, the the results of questions about defining energy. 
um, you'll see that we've got uh, blue with those people who were uh, physics qualified. Um, red is those people who are not physics qualified. You can see there's not a not a great difference in in the responses. What what is what is slightly worrying? We're not we're not really sure if it's just a, a language issue or or, or a, a lack of familiarity. But you'll see that um, the second statement, energy, refers to an abstract mathematical concept. Is it was was quite low down the ranking, uh, not not the lowest, but second from the bottom. We we would we and the, and I think the research and the literature and physicists generally would tend to to disagree with that being placed so so low. The, the two either side of it, energy refers to a physical quantity and energy refers to a physics quantity. These were directly aimed at the uh, definitions in the standards. We didn't really think that it was very clear. Um, whether we were talking about you know physical domains, you know actually um, things that were going on, or, or just the fact that it was a physics thing, uh, that that didn't seem to come out of it. We're not sh really sure that that the physical aspect is is really that well defined. What what was good is we we all seem to agree that the the um, energy refers to something real, although it cannot be sensed, is the worst, and so we we everybody seems to be quite happy with that. That's, that's one of the worst answers. So, what what else do we find in the survey? There, there was quite a quite actually some of the most elucidating parts were actually some of the comments, weren't they? Yeah, there were some really really um, in line. You know, some of which are uh, definitely borne out by um, experiences of other people and research. So, as as somebody's pointed out, st st older students, 15, 16 year old, uh, can understand these abstract concepts better. Now that 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 view has got some backing elsewhere. The the issue is that we tend to we tend to talk about energy and we tend to use the, the ideas early on in other in other in other areas as well as just physics. You know, so in biology, we'll, they'll talk about energy. Um, in chemistry, they'll talk about energy, uh, and they and they do that you know much earlier on. Um, so it's a it's a little bit difficult to to leave it to, to the fifteen. To, um, to sixteen-year-old age group, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a really good point. Another, another issue is what gets examined gets taught, and and that's that's also a, a, a really good point. I think, I mean, it's it's not necessarily a, a, an issue for teachers, but but rather, you know, for those people doing um, question setting, um, writing curriculums, um, they they really need to think very carefully about the you know the consequences of where they put this in the curriculum because there's you know there's some serious knock-on effects so for instance when you start putting in specific equations okay you you, you know you you put in uh, an equation and suddenly that that then becomes you know a form of energy uh, because we don't want to keep saying you know half mv squared all the time so we're going to use the, the words you know kinetic energy and then um there are you know, there there are sort of implications with that. You're you're making a form of energy seem like it's an official form of energy, like it's some something special, when when that isn't really the case. I mean, it's not. You know, there aren't there, there isn't a set of defined forms of energy. Um, you know, they're they're just the ones that we tend to use. Yeah, I mean, I think that when we when we unpack some of Robin Miller's paper, I think some of the stuff. You know, energy is a is is a tricky idea, ill defined, and uh, the language is a is a problem with some of this stuff. And yeah, and I think um, as some of the the comments pointed out, you know, um, energy needs a lot of background teaching, um, and it's not just you know not just for the students, but I mean, we, if we're going to have uh, energy sort of used throughout the curriculum, um, we need to to, to think about. Um, you know what the what the ongoing ramifications of that are going to be, because uh, we're not just teaching it in isolation as a little little topic. Um, so you know some of the comments reflected that, and and also the point was made about actually getting it over. Even if you you feel that you might you know you might have a good understanding of the, the some of these energy concepts, getting them across in a way that doesn't create misconceptions can be a far more difficult task. It, it can be be really quite tricky and sometimes you feel like you're walking a bit of a tightrope. But but I think I think that's you know that's just part yeah. of, you know part of the issue. I think you know whatever you're doing it's probably if you're doing a good job it's probably going to feel like that. Yeah and ho hopefully these videos and 
uh, Robin Miller's paper will help improve that situation for people and make them feel a little bit more confident about being open to the fact that that actually to, to share that difficulty with their students. I certainly find that in my own teaching, that if you tell the kids, actually, this, this is a challenging area, and sometimes our language, many of my students speak, speak another language, and maybe in their languages, it might be more easily conveyed. And in English, we do have problems, um, and we have, have problems in physics all the time. So terms like work are power, energy, um, are all very difficult to manage. Um, and But I think if we're open with the kids and talk to them about that, and say that there are these problems, then I think that's a that's a step in the right direction, and hopefully these videos can help with that. I think overall, I mean, what we saw in the comments and some of the discussions that we've had around the survey is that you know that there's plenty of experience and uh, teachers in in New Zealand generally um, have got have got good ideas. You know, some of them are doing really cutting edge work, and within the community, there's the experience and the insight. Um, to, to move this topic forward in a, in a, you know, in a positive way.